Hey guys, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to another journaling video. So it's kind of the end of November now, which means we're getting into a bunch of the fun end of year journaling content that tends to appear on YouTube. And I have a couple videos planned, but to start off the kind of end of year situation that we have upon us, I wanted to sit down with you and talk a little bit about some of the stationery that I've really enjoyed using this year. I'm filming this video a little farther in advance because I'm hoping that uh, if you do want to buy stationery for a loved one who's into journaling, this maybe will give you a couple of ideas. Uh, or just if you're curious to see what I enjoyed this year and want to share what you liked below, that's cool too. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share kind of the stuff that really uh, was well used for me this year, stuff that I really enjoyed. And I'm going to be breaking this up into three sections. I thought I would create a little bit of structure for us today. I'm first going to talk about uh, the kind of new things that I've discovered, and that's going to be in two categories. We're going to have the kind of general new items, and then I'm going to have the second group be kind of the pricier or uh, investment items. So things that maybe you'd want to pick up if you wanted to like treat yourself or just like things that I want to kind of flag as <laughs> a little more expensive uh, versus, you know, the regular things that are maybe a little more affordable and uh, not, you know, those pricier stationary items. And then at the end of the video, I thought I would kind of share a third section of favorites, which is going to be kind of the long time ride or die favorites that I'm tempted to put in these videos every year, but aren't technically new things that I purchased <laughs> this year. So uh, I'm gonna kind of mention those at the end in case you're curious uh, if the long-standing favorites are still here or if you're new and you'd like to know what kind of stationery I use every single time, no matter what journal or notebook I'm in, then you can kind of stay for that section and see those things. So that is what we are going to do today. I have my notes here on the side because I had to think about this before I sat down and filmed. I'm gonna put my tea over here and I'm just gonna go ahead and take out the first kind of new, new item. So first item I wanted to show you. This is a new thing that I picked up about a month ago from Muji, but they've been so helpful and they're just so well designed that I wanted to include these as my favorites for the year. These are called the scissors with cover on Muji's website and they're just a pair of very small scissors with a matching cover here that's all made of plastic and then you can remove the cover and you have the scissors here which you can use to cut things. Now as someone who doesn't always travel with stationary supplies but likes to keep scissors with them at all times Oftentimes I have gotten nervous in the past about leaving my scissors kind of exposed in my pencil case, which is something that is very uh, important to me. And I don't wanna accidentally cut it if I'm accidentally leaving the scissors open in it or anything like that. So I really like these scissors because they come with a little cover so you don't have to worry about them accidentally cutting anything. And they're also very small and they're easy to use and I mean, they're also just like really beautifully designed. So I think these were about $2 Canadian at Muji. I'm not gonna go over prices in this video, but I will link everything below, but also just a really nice um, budget-friendly pair of scissors that protects itself, which is really great. Next thing, and I'm gonna quickly preface this by saying I'm only talking about the body of this pen. I'm not talking about the insert or the refill, but this is a Uniball one pen. This is, I think, a limited edition color in smoky olive or olive or frosted <laughs> olive potentially. And this is the pen that I've used, I think, since I purchased it this year. So I do keep a different refill in this pen. I don't use the Uniball refill, but I really, really love 
the lightness of this pen, how easy it is to hold and write with, and also I really love how the clip here is something that you can kind of easily bend like this to clip onto things, and it also fits in a lot of pen loops, which is really nice. So this is something that I purchased, I think around the middle of this year, and it's been really great staple in my stationery collection. I do use this every day, so Uniball pen. They don't have this color anymore, but they do have some other colors, which is really cool. But yeah, love this pen. Super simple, but just a really good everyday pen. Another kind of supply that I wanted to shout out is this glue tape. This is the Elmer Permanent Glue Tape, and at least for me, and maybe I'm picky, a good glue tape is hard to find. <laughs> and this one is the best one that I've found so far. Previously, I'd used glue tapes like the ones from Tombow. Uh, the problem I found with the Tombow glue tape is the permanent one has a blue tape color. And for a lot of thinner papered inserts like the Traveler's Notebook or the Hobonichi, which is the Tomoe River paper, I found that the blue would leave a cast on the other side of the paper, which would uh, just kind of bother me personally. I didn't really like how the blue would show through. So this year I managed to find this one by Elmer's. The glue in here is, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually clear, which is why you probably can't see it very well. But it's very sticky, just like the Tombow in terms of how uh, firmly it will stick on the paper and adhere, but I like how this one has the clear tape and also you can order it very easily and you can buy refills just like the Tombow as well, which is really nice. I've gone through one of these already. I didn't buy the refill because my old one, my dog got a hold of and ate it. So I needed to replace the body as well, which is why I just purchased a whole new one. But next time I need to refill this, unless my dog eats it again, I will be buying the refills. Next up, another new discovery this year. These are the Field Notes Grid Notebooks. I purchased these earlier this year just to use a kind of simple small pocket size notebook to jot down notes as kind of a supplement to my phone just kind of a scratch pad for uh, writing down things when I need to just get it out of my head so I don't forget and I picked these up I got mine from Wonder Pens but I just have here the current book that I'm using as well as what the the new one looks like because they look a little bit different but these books are definitely such a great, a great little book to have on hand. I have a couple in my stash ready to go for when I'm done these, but it's, it's a very simple book. It's just a pocket notebook with kind of plain grid paper that looks like this, but uh, they're just really great for writing in, bringing on the go, jotting things down in. They're really well designed. They have a really cool look to them and they also wear quite well. This one hasn't really gone through too much as you can see, but it just, it holds up pretty well. I don't really take this out of the house, but still just kind of going around the house, being thrown around, it still holds up and they're just really nice little companion notebooks. And I like to put a little a little photo on mine, but yeah, these were these were cool to discover this year. I think I heard about them first from Megan Rhiannon because she uses them, or she did use them as a commonplace book. But for just writing out simple notes, they are they're a great little book. Now we've entered the kind of traveler's notebook items of the kind of initial set of favorites, and I have two right here. The first is this little book, which is something that I got from a reseller, not a reseller, but a third party seller on Etsy. Uh, this is a Japan Starbucks Roastery exclusive insert that I believe you can only get at the Starbucks Roastery stores as well as the Traveler's Company stores in Japan. but. I managed to get mine off of a reseller from Etsy, and this is the Coffee X Journey Traveler's Company collaboration with the Starbucks 
reserve and this is in pocket size or sorry <laughs> passport size so it fits in this notebook and this contains these little inserts that fit and you can like slip little photos and ephemera in here so this is kind of what I consider to be the passport equivalent of the business card refill that you can get for the regular size notebook. Right now, I'm using this as a storage place for any ephemera that I collect throughout the year that I want to archive when I finish my daily journal insert. So I've just been kind of slipping things in here as I collect them, which is really great. But this notebook, as well as actually the regular one, uh, with the pockets is just a really good insert to have on hand and uh, just be able to slip things in or if I'm traveling with this notebook and I want to have a space I can collect things, I can kind of slip things into these pockets quite easily and not have to worry about them falling out because the pocket is sealed around all three corners. So just really great for storing things and bringing things on the go. So that is the Coffee X Journey, which is, I think the only passport or traveler's notebook insert I wanted to mention in this video, but I do have one other favorite from them, which is the charms that I got this year for my traveler's notebooks. So I have two, one on my regular, one on my passport. The one on the regular is this guy right here. This is the Fly to the World from Japan. Yep. Fly to the World from Japan Traveler's Factory charm. This is exclusive to Japan as well as all of the Traveler's Company partner shops. And when I went to Wonder Pens one day in the summer because they were a uh, partner shop, I was taking a look at their section of Traveler's Company stuff and they had this charm. So that's that's where I was able to pick this up from. Both of these are brass charms, so you can kind of see the patina that they have on them, but they're really, really nice. The charm on the right here is from Vom Kuhn. This is the, uh, let's see, the, what does it say? We travel not to escape life, but for life not to escape us. So this is the kind of travel charm this one has like a loop that you slip onto the elastic, but this one's a little different because you actually slide the elastic through these two holes here. But um, yeah, in terms of, uh, but yeah, both of these charms I really like and I really like using them to kind of add some personality and uh, customization to my notebooks. I think they just kind of add that perfect touch of customization and uh, I really, really love them. So. I do, I do enjoy these charms and there's so many cool charms you can get for traveler's notebooks, but these two are my favorites at the moment. I should not have brought this one away because the next thing that I wanted to talk about is actually in this notebook and we are now entering the kind of more uh, pricier items and splurge items from the year that I wanted to mention as favorites. So just a note there, these are more expensive items, but definitely ones that I've really enjoyed this year. The first one is this uh, Traveler's Notebook Wallet, which is a collab between the Superior Labor and BK. It's this really beautiful canvas wallet that has a painted panel here and some leather accents on the top and bottom. And I just love kind of having this slipped around the one notebook that I usually keep in my traveler's notebook. It's a pretty expensive wallet. You can get uh, more price friendly ones by the actual traveler's company, but I really liked this one and I just kind of wanted to buy this wallet and keep it in my notebook <laughs> until the end of time potentially. So I have really enjoyed using this this year though. It adds um, nice protection to my notebook and I also like the um, thickness of my traveler's notebook when I have one insert in with this. I personally prefer to always have one insert in my notebook 
with two it would get quite bulky, but for one it is really nice and it fits really well. So that's kind of the first pricey item. The second one is right, right here. This is the Superior Labor Utility Case in light brown. This is not technically marketed as a pencil case, however, I choose to use it as one, which you can see here. And that reminds me, I need to put away these things. But as you can see, it has kind of two main compartments. This side, which you can store your pens and kind of supplies that have clips over here. And then on this left-hand side, this is where you can store any supplies. So I have things like an eraser, some washi tape, my scissors, glue, double-sided tape, all of that. I bought this, I think, sometime last year or the year before, and it has been my pencil case ever since. I really love how this organizes my supplies, and I just also really love using this case. It has aged a little bit, I think. I'm not sure. I think the other ones tend to show a bit more wear because the undyed uh, doesn't have any tanning, but because this is already tanned, I don't think it will darken too, too much, but it might. I do have a couple, I don't know, scuffs maybe. I don't really, I have very short nails, so I don't tend to scuff my leather very easily, but it has kind of developed a bit of a shine, which has been cool. And this is a very expensive <laughs> pencil case, but I've really enjoyed using it and I'm going to continue using it and I really love it. So I did want to talk about it a little bit, but definitely not the kind of thing you need as a pencil case. Um, but I'm really glad that even though I did pick it up, I have been using it the entire time since I purchased it and I'm going to continue using it. So this has been very, very lovely uh, to, to use. Ah, okay. Next up. Okay, here we go, got him. Okay, the next one, it's a two in one because these are two different things, but they're kind of the same. And uh, these are my photo printers that I use. And obviously photo printers are definitely more expensive, but I am including them here because I bought them recently and also Photo printers are probably one of my favorite stationary supplies, journaling supplies that I that I own. I love printing out my photos and having them in my journal or just putting them in a photo album and having them with me. And these are two of my favorite ones to use. This left one is the Instax Mini Link printer. This printer allows you to print let me see if I have it. Oh yes, I think I do. This allows you to print Instax photos like the one right here. This is an Instax photo. So gone are the days where you need to use a camera and take a photo and physically have the photo print with you. Now instead what you can do is you can have a printer like this and then you can just uh, take your phone and use the app to print any photo that you have on your phone, which I like for a couple of reasons. One, I, I don't like to carry the camera with me when I go traveling just because it's kind of big and bulky. Um, but the second is Instax prints are incredibly expensive compared to standard photo paper. And I find that when you're printing a photo from your phone, and you know that the lighting is good and it's been edited correctly, there's a much bigger chance of the photo turning out pretty well versus sometimes I found when I had my Instax camera and I'd take a photo if the lighting wasn't great or it was a weird angle, it would not necessarily come out as nicely. So when I picked up this printer, I found that the photos I was printing with it were significantly better. So I really loved using this. Don't know if this is kind of a weird way to describe it, but I love including Instax photos in my journals because to me, the distorted quality of the photo 
makes it feel to me like the photo is like the way I would see the memory looking back on it. So these don't print like the most photo accurate photos on like this printer, which I'll talk about next, but I love kind of the washed out, grainy, unsaturated look that they bring. So Instax printer, this is kind of the regular one, but you, there's also the wide and the square and <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to pick up another one in the square. So we'll see what happens. I kind of have a weakness for photo printers, but anyway, moving on. This guy I got this year and this is the Canon Selfie CP1500. This is probably closer to like a proper photo printer that you would get without like actually buying a giant printer to print photos with. Um, this one, I have some photos here that I can show you because I just printed them recently. This one prints uh, your typical four by six photos. So I have some here that I just printed from some mini mini adventures that I took recently. So as you can see, compared to the Instax photos, these are much more color accurate. They're much more clear. They're much more crisp. Kind of what you would get when you go to get photos printed. They're probably not like the best quality ever, but they're they're quite comparable to I think like if you went to a store and got your photos printed from like a drugstore or a kind of simple photo printing store I think you get something very comparable to this the also printer paper is much less expensive compared to the Instax because it's uh it's not like a big bulky print it's just like a kind of four by six piece of glossy photo paper so while I love Instaxes for printing those kind of special moments, I do also like having this printer to print photos. I'll print photos with this to put on my fridge. I'll print photos like this for giving to people, putting in photo albums, which are what these are for. And whenever I go like on a trip when I'm traveling, I'll use this printer to print out photos from the trip. So. One may argue that you don't need multiple photo printers, but I, I say no. <laughs> I, I love using both of these. Different purposes slightly, but both, both really great. Definitely investments, but I am so glad that I picked this up and I think I got it on sale, which was pretty cool. But yeah, Canon Selfies CP1500 and then the Instax Mini Link. So after the photo printers, this may not <laughs> qualify to some as a expensive or stationary item, but I mean, considering how much one would pay for a pencil, which is like two bucks or maybe like one dollar, this $45 pencil I felt qualified for the more expensive purchases in my favorites video. So this guy here is the Traveler's Company Brass Pencil and he's a small guy he's pretty little I don't have really big hands but you can see he fits very comfortably in in here like this this is a brass pencil by the Traveler's Company it comes like a lot more shiny but I've had mine for about a year now so it's kind of patinaed and it comes in this little case like this with an eraser and a clip and then you pull out this like that your pencil is here and then you can insert the back into the container and you have a pencil. Obviously pencils you can buy anywhere but I wanted to talk about this one because even though it was an expensive pencil I really enjoy using this. It is very handy the way that the pencil lead itself is contained inside the brass case so I don't have to worry about pencil marks anywhere. It's really like, you know, sturdy, it's made of brass, so you don't have to worry about it, I don't know, getting nicked or broken or snapping like a regular pencil. And also besides journaling with this, I find this pencil is really helpful for when I'm doing kind of projects around the house, when I'm building something or 
needing to mark some wood to cut, I find because this pencil has a clip, I can like clip it on my shirt or my pants really easily. So it's easy to have a pencil on me when I need it to mark a measurement when I'm doing a project. So it's also just very practical in the way that it comes with like the clip and it being really small. So that kind of concludes the like pricey section, but yeah, this guy, I think I picked up maybe, I'm not very good at remembering when I buy stationery, but I think this was a recent purchase and I really, really like the brass pencil. And I also really like how it comes with refills. So when I finish this pencil, you can buy refills from Traveler's Company that sell the pencil and the eraser that you can replace. So you don't need to buy a new one of these, which is really nice. All right, final favorites are gonna be kind of the ride or die long-term things that I would probably have to keep mentioning in favorites videos, but I'm just gonna kind of bring them to the end so that people who've been here a while don't get tired because I'm sure you've heard me talk about <laughs> these things over and over and over again. But the first, of course, is the ink that I use in this pen, which is the Sarasa 0.5 gel pen refill in the color brown gray. I brought out my Traveler's Notebook so I could show you what the pen looks like in case you're curious. This here is the color of the pen. So if you look closely, it's not black. It's actually like a dark brown color, which I really, really like because I don't like writing with black pen. I just find it really harsh on my eyes. So I prefer the brown. I think I've gone through like <laughs> eight refills of this pen. I really like it. It writes well. Occasionally you get a weird refill that doesn't write well, so then you have to throw it out and buy a new one, but that only has happened to me, I think once, thankfully. But yeah, I think I started using this refill like three years ago and I still use it. It's great, I love it, and I love using it in this new pen body that I got a while ago. The second thing that's a long-standing favorite are these Midori Index tabs. These are, besides the pen, the only thing that I will consistently move journal to journal whenever I change notebook or change journal. These are little metal tabs that you can slip on and off the paper. They're movable, which is really nice. So you don't have to kind of stick it down and have them stay in one place. And I love using these to mark kind of where my month, week or day is in a planner or an important page in my journal. And I think I've had these for a while, so they don't actually, you can kind of see actually here. <laughs> this one's much older than these two because it's a lot less shiny, but they do patina over time. They're reusable. So I think I've had like this one pack um, because it comes with like eight for years now. And I just kind of reuse them. And when I'm not using them, I put them on this paper bag cut out so that I don't lose them. And that works really well. And besides that, I think that kind of concludes all of the favorites that I wanted to show you today. So we have yeah, a bunch of different things. I hope you enjoyed seeing my kind of favorite supplies that I discovered over this year. Definitely a couple of standouts, uh, scissors, I'm talking about you, <laughs> but also some great ones that have just kind of stood the test of time, like the Sarasa Grand refill and uh, the tabs. So yeah, those are kind of the favorite standout stationary pieces that I had this year but I would love to know in the comments what you found this year that you really enjoyed and found yourself using a lot throughout the year. And uh, if you are shopping for someone who loves stationery, I do hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you some ideas for what you could give someone if they're crazy about paper products, just like the rest of us are. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you're still here. I hope you enjoyed. And besides that, I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.